All right, so here we are at the end of the cast, starting to wade through Death Stranding. This is, in case you somehow don't know, this is the Hideo Kojima, Kojima Productions, um, right now PlayStation exclusive, going to come to PC sometime next year. Um, game. <laughs> uh, mm. I, I guess I'll try to do a little summary of it. Um, there's actually a really good, like, real simple summary of it that I read somewhere. I think it was Polygon. Um, so basically the story of this game is, um, the world of the dead and the world of the living have come in contact with each other and the result is um kind of like an apocalypse on planet earth um and because when this when this happened the um humans that come in contact with the dead cause basically nuclear explosions um all of the cities and civilization has kind of crumbled and any surviving people have gone into isolation and that is the kind of introduction to death stranding um it is in classic kojima fashion explained in game way more obtusely than that um but that's kind of the gist of what we're doing here um it of course stars norman reedus who is uh, one of the most boring protagonists I think I've seen in a game in a long time. Um, he he must be new to Norman Reedus. <laughs> he's boring huh? in everything. He must be he must be new to Norman Reedus. He's boring. Oh in no everything. no I know he's a terrible actor. <laughs> Jesus Christ! But it, I'm talking about a game. Um, in terms of like gameplay protagonists, this he's he. Uh, there's a lot to talk about here. Um, oh, yeah. So, I guess we'll. I'm gonna start with the what you're doing in the game, what you're actually doing once you're in control of Norman Reedus in the game. Um, this is an open world, semi survival, semi kind of like um exploration uh package delivery game you know yeah. that genre um yeah. and you're basically rebuilding this world that is completely destroyed and these um small groups of people that are um uh living presumably by themselves i guess every one of these locations is just a single person um living like underground in the shelter to protect themselves from these um these uh things called bts which are ghosts that um appear every once in a while when it rains but it's not rain it's time fall and it degrades like like speeds up aging so they're living underground, but they don't have, I don't know how they get any material. I guess th there's these porters that you sometimes see, but you're one of them. And um, that's Death Stranding. So uh, thanks, guys. <laughs> um, yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> the game's out in Sorry. For, for for like for I've got hysterical. <laughs> for like three years we've wondered what Death Stranding is and we know what it is. Um but it's still incredibly difficult to explain in words what Death Stranding yeah. is without making it extremely complicated and going down all these different avenues of um you know what these ghosts are BTs, but are they ghosts? They're kind of like demons. Then they're big demons, and they're bad, but you don't really see them too often. 
and then there's a guy in a mask. There's a couple of guys in masks. Um, one of them's bad. One of them doesn't seem to be bad. Um, and it, it just goes down this road of like, there's just too much to explain. So, um, what I'm going to talk about is what I've enjoyed about the game and we can kind of dissect our problems with the, I think at least me and Lee have some problems, have similar problems with the story. Um, I don't really know where Derek falls on that, but we'll get to that. Um, so I had a moment in this game um, over the weekend. Uh, so I put in a few hours into it, and um, there's a lot of articles out there about how it's very important that you try to get to chapter three of this game as quickly as possible. And that's definitely, for, for, from my perspective, um, very good advice because chapter well, chapter one is very much story focused. It's mostly cutscenes. Chapter 2 is where it kind of tutorializes you on what you're going to be doing in the open world. And it's not bad, it's just not quite as open and not quite as dynamic as the game gets once it puts you into the giant chunk of open world that it does in Chapter 3. Um, on its surface, what you're doing is you're going to these isolated locations, you're talking to somebody there, and they have they're requesting stuff they're, they're requesting things that they need to survive like medicine or food or equipment um and they'll also have deliveries that they want you to make to some other location so you go in there you go into the location you talk to them it's like a hologram because they're underground in the shelter um and you make your deliveries that you have and then you collect more things for deliveries and you can like fabricate equipment that you need that you may need to um, get you to the next location and then you load it all up on your back like a um, rugged uh, Appalachian delivery person and you literally walk out the door and start moving toward the next location. Um, on foot you start out on foot um, you do get vehicles and and stuff that makes the traverse a little bit easier as you go along which is very important for this game so that's kind of like where chapter three ends up being like a big um, big step forward um, so yeah in in the game itself like when you're actually traversing to your next location it's all about planning your route there's there is combat but it's very simple like melee combat um, and with with human enemies but then there's also some stealth combat with the BTs that I was talking about the the phantoms that um, you kind of have to stealth by and if you get caught it just kind of goes to hell and you have to fight this big um, goo boss thing um, or, or run away so you're, you're very encouraged to stealth your way through a lot of this stuff um, and a lot of the game and challenge comes in kind of planning your route through these areas with different dangers and hazards. Like um, you can cross rivers, but you might get swept away with the current. So you want to figure out the shallowest part of the river to walk through or like lay a ladder down over it in order to safely go across the river um maybe there's an area up ahead that's uh got some bad guys in it but if you went over the cliff the, the mountain to the left of it um you could bypass that so then you use your ladders and your ropes that you've that you have on you to scale the cliff it's going to take you a little bit longer but it's going to be a lot safer in the long run um and that's like most of this game, most of the gameplay of this game is um, planning your route and moving your um, cargo from one location to the other um, without taking as much damage as possible. So I mentioned earlier the time fall rain that happens that that is in this game and what this is is rain that makes things age quicker. So 
all this cargo you have on your back, if you go through an area that has this rain, will slowly start to degrade over time. So you're encouraged to either bypass the rain or, um, you know, go through it as quickly as possible. That might be juxtaposed with your original route of trying to go around these enemies, so then you have to plan for that as well. Um, and it's really all about route planning. It's like if you type in your your route into Google Maps, and then all of a sudden Google Maps doesn't account for this street being closed, so then you're kind of out on your own, and you have to figure out how you have to get to your destination, because you're, you were born in a time where um, actually reading maps wasn't something you ever had to do, so you're freaking out and you're having a heart attack in the middle of the highway. Um, <laughs> that's kind of how this a lot of this game goes. Um, when it's at its best, sometimes it um, doesn't... Sometimes it's just a lot of walking back and forth without too much in the way to, to cause you a lot of trouble. Um... Sometimes that's satisfying. Sometimes it's satisfying because you've figured out a way to bypass the hazards that they've put in your path. Um, and luckily, um, they do kind of give you a um, satisfying path of getting better equipment, um, making it easier to traverse these areas that used to be treacherous before. Um, and just kind of like making you feel more and more like you're getting, um, you're getting more better and more equipped to deal with all of the various hazards that are um, going to be thrown in your way. Um, like one of the, one of the biggest things you get is, is a vehicle. Like once you get a vehicle in this game, it's like, it it's a huge change. Um, like I was saying before, I had this moment over the weekend where um, there are these areas on the map that are controlled by an enemy faction called mules and I'm not going to even talk about the lore behind mules um, I'm going to let you look that up yourself um, I don't want to go on that tangent but um, the, the fact is that these are old like previous delivery people that have turned, um, let's just say they're bad, and what their goal is is to steal your cargo um, that you're trying to get from place to place. And they, they, they live in these camps. They, they have like a couple of settlements, they have some vehicles, and you know, there's a bunch of them. But I was able to go into the one of these camps and um, subdue all of the enemies there and what the game does is tell me that hey now that you've cleared out this camp it's now a safe spot for not only you but other people that are connected to the server that you're the instance of the world that, that you're in um, and basically I spent like three hours loading up like tons and tons of materials in this camp because they steal all the stuff. This is what their whole thing is. They steal um, everything that they can and they put it in these special locations and I just trucked back and forth all this material. Now if all I was doing was that and there was no like payoff for that, that would that wouldn't be much. It, it would be it wouldn't be very more it would be pretty boring but um, as I said before, you're connected to all these other players. Um, and I'm not 100% sure how that works. If you keep going into the same server, how many different instances there are, um, it, it, that, that, that's a little nebulous to me. But the point is, is that um, you're all kind of working with other players to build routes through this world. You know, there'll be ladders from other players that you find that uh, were there before you, so you can use those ladders to cross rivers. There's bridges, and the big thing that you can make are roads, and these are kind of like 
you can't place these wherever you want. They're set locations. You just bring a ton of resources to them and it builds this big chunk of road. And then that's kind of like a safe path for you to walk or drive down without having to worry about enemies and stuff like that. Um, and that's what I did. I, I collected all these resources and I went and I built and I built like three huge chunks of road. I just kept carting the stuff back with the with the trucks that um, that uh, the the mules had, and that was pretty satisfying. Um, it not only was it satisfying because I kind of like that kind of um, uh, collecting. You know, I like th that kind of collecting in in a game. I like having to um, like like a uh, going back and forth between locations like finding the perfect path to take my truck down without taking too much damage without getting stuck on rocks i like doing that but then on top of it i get to build these roads that i know other players are going to be extremely grateful for when they get there and they see the this this huge road already built through their zone and they're like wow this is awesome i don't have to worry about um you know this this mule area or these BTs over here because I have this cool road built and um, I can be a little bit safer. Um, and like there's a whole system of you can give likes and receive likes for the things you put down, and so that's uh, that motivates you as well to um, you know uh, feedback that people are actually seeing these things and using them and liking them and enjoying the fact that they're there. Um, it's just like a little bit of a way to bring like a really big, really empty, otherwise empty open world um, to make it feel like you're you're connected to somebody, um, which is, you know, a, a big theme of the game and the story and stuff like that. And um, as heavy handed as a lot of the storytelling is, um, ultimately I feel like they're proving the point by having you know the gameplay also connect to this kind of stuff to have this kind of like the more you do for the community the more you um, are connected to people um, the more satisfying the game is to play so that was my moment with this game I'm, I'm getting like a real strong like breath of the wild vibe from exploring this world and not having like a very specific place to go necessarily but just kind of like doing my own thing in this world and knowing that it's you know uh contributing to something um whether it be mm -hmm. you know building a road or just getting um enough supplies to you know, get a new upgraded exosuit or um, eventually hopefully get a better type of vehicle or something like that. Um, and there's, there's more too, uh, but I'm, I've talked for enough. I'm going to let you guys um, share your thoughts on it now. Um, and then maybe we'll all wrap back around with another story. I guess like for the type of game it was i didn't think i was gonna enjoy it outside of trying to figure out what the story and what kind of lore it had in the game because mm -hmm. that was kind of like my driving point coming into this is what is this What's yeah that was be? that was very much what my what i was expecting to get out of it too um, like like enjoying the story but maybe the gameplay didn't really click yeah and um like for me like the whole like delivery taking stuff back and forth isn't like my keenest part of games but mm -hmm. um with this one i've actually been kind of enjoying it mainly because of, like the features you get on the map like the map's pretty detailed in what it shows you mm -hmm. um and then like you said when you're pl planning routes uh stuff might change and you can go in there and then you can edit the path and you can actually make like like you know your point a you know your point b where you're heading to Mm -hmm. and you can create an initial path and then as you're going on if something happens like time fall and you don't want to go there or you see hey you can easily go around this way um you can then change that on your map and make like new directions so that you know when you ping yeah um your device so you can see the line again 
um, you can kind of go around and explore that way. So that's been like, that's been a lot of fun for me, which I didn't think I was going to enjoy that part of it yeah. as much. Yeah, you can basically plot your own set of waypoints and it'll actually show it, show it to you on the terrain. Um, like Yeah, it's definitely been one of like, the over best the terrain. waypoint systems. Yeah, like like early on in chapter three, I knew that there was some mule areas. I saw some um, community signs. Like you can put like um, you can put signs down on the world that say like, "Oh, there's timefall here. There's mules here. There's BTs here." I saw some of that, and then I deliberately made myself a waypoint around that and mm -hmm. um, bypassed it all. And it, you know, it. it was easy to follow because it actually had that path plotted for me right in right in the game. Yeah, and that's one of the other things I've been enjoying about it too is like the asynchronous multiplayer aspect of it where mm -hmm. you can have these signs and stuff that show up from other people so like somebody might go through an area and you're coming that same way because it's the same delivery but they might not have something that they wanted to put down or you might not and you could be like hey this is a good spot for a ladder or hey um, yeah. You can put down a little sign saying rope, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. like this would be a good spot for that. And then um, the whole like like system is kind of. That was kind of interesting. I was like, at first I was like, huh, we're getting likes and stuff. And that's like our experience as well. But then like as you go on and you start exploring and laying down this stuff and then you see that like, all right, somebody else has come here and they've just dropped a bunch of likes because it was useful to them. Mm -hmm. Um that's been kind of interesting and like following that and watching that, like when you log in, you'll see, okay, you've earned this much while you were gone because people have used your stuff still. Yeah. It, it kind of um, like makes you more aware and whether or not what you're doing is, is right or not almost because like it makes you better at placing those kinds of things because you're like, okay, well that ladder got a lot of likes, but that rope didn't. So maybe that rope wasn't as useful as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, and like um, this game also, like you said too, this game has a lot of small, small parts to it that like make up the entirety of the game. Mm -hmm. And like you know, it was like the minor stealth parts, the the little bit of combat you have. Um, I don't know. It just it's kind of just been like an interesting thing to play through because you kind of never really know what fully you're getting into as you go through it. Yeah, yeah, um, like. The, the deliveries are one thing, but they're more of just a way to get you yeah, into get trouble you almost. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, like what, kind of, what kind of stuff, what kind of crap are you going to get into when you take this delivery that, you know, you've made that trip before, but maybe this time, time fall has rolled in and you're going to have to sneak around some BTs or, you know, this time uh, you're, you've connected the region to the network. So you have all of this... Um, all these feed, like, things you that get, you like, can all interact that with, and, yeah. yeah. And then, um, I don't know. It was kind of weird because, like, one of like, like you were talking about the moment you had with the game that kind of shined the light for you for enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the things for me was like, I finally it was actually on stream. I came up and I had that first boss battle, mm -hmm. and I was like, wow, this was a lot easier than I thought it would can be. Like, it was still fun. It was still interesting. But then, like, back into the actual world where you're doing these deliveries, like getting pulled in by one of those when I was just out in normal game, like with the mini bosses that pop up was way more terrifying than actually being in this like set boss battle that you get put into. Yeah. So it kind of adds more into that, like, all right, sneaking around, plotting your course. Cause you know, you don't want to get in with something like this. Cause it's a lot yeah, more, it, to me, at least to me, it was a lot more challenging than the set piece. That's going yeah, to be there. At some definitely. Point. Especially f at the beginning. And like, that that boss battle, I feel like. So before that, I hadn't used any of the grenades. I don't know. I just right. hadn't, yeah, I hadn't I haven't been using really them either. Because I was like, oh, grenades, whatever. Let's just keep pushing on. Yeah. And then now you're like, oh yeah, I should have been using them. Maybe. Yeah, because they end up they end up being really really good out, uh, against BTs. Like if the the where they end up landing when you throw them is a little. Yeah, dicey. They, they don't know. Yeah. They don't always land where it says they're gonna land. I don't know if that's a physics thing that I gotta figure out, or if it's just the goofiness of the game. But if you do, they're really good at taking out BTs. And um, you know, I wish I had been using them before 
because it would have made traveling through some of those earlier areas a lot easier. Mm-hmm. You're you're basically connecting these locations onto um, a network of um, you know that's the the whole premise of the game is you're trying to connect all of these isolated people onto this basically the internet again so they can share information and communicate with each other even though they're isolated um and every time you go to a new major location you talk to the person you put them on the network but the first time you go to there you have to you have no help it's just you once you're off the network you don't have any of the assistance from the other players that have been there before you uh, there's no ladders there's no ropes there's no signs there's no, there's no there's none of that so you have to find your own path up there um to wherever you're going and what's really cool is when you do get them back on the network all of that stuff all of the stuff from the other players gets filled in so then you can see your path compared to other people's paths and like you can be like oh I kind of went up the exact same way that this other person did or Mm -hmm. you can be like wow I really made that way more difficult than it needed to be because it turns out there was this path right here that I didn't need to put down any ladders at all or something like that yeah um and it's cool because if you do find your own path you can still put down your like signs like you can put down like a little waypoint marker that says hey go this way because um there's like a a ravine here that you can go down and then you put a ladder there so you kind of want to guide people to it um and like all that stuff will stay once you get connected to the network so then your path is there for um somebody else to use in the future yeah i like to say it's kind of just like to wrap up my thoughts with it I guess, like, the, the one big problem I've been running into is the inconsistency of how well stacking your deliveries works. There's some times when, you know, you're loaded up to your max carrying capacity, and then you can, you know, you can hold and stabilize yourself and make it, like, fine. And then there's other times where you're at, like, half capacity just trying to do, like, to move on the missions to progress you on. And you're tripping and falling. You can't stabilize. You're leaning this way. You're leaning that yeah. way. Um, I don't know. Just to me, it seems super inconsistent versus like what you're doing by load amounts. Yeah, there, there's there's definitely some there's definitely different things that contribute to like the tripping and and steady. The the big thing that I noticed is turning. So whenever you turn, you're more likely to no matter how much stuff you have on your back, you're more likely to start tripping up and lose balance. Yeah. Um, so what I started doing is whenever I turned, I used the the both triggers and secured my backpack on and then turned, and then you can take it off and you can walk a little bit faster without holding it um, as long as you're going in a straight line. Um, you pre- pre- Pretty much straight line. But yeah, th- there's also things like there's a lot of little rocks on the ground and if you um you can trip up on those and going down a cliff face like a, a steep slope you'll lose your balance there too and um you know we, i didn't really talk about this when i was talking about the gameplay but like you basically use the left and right trigger as your hands to kind of like grip onto your backpack and um, steady yourself whenever you start to lose balance. Um, and if you lose balance, you can risk like damaging your your deliveries. Um, stuff may dislodge, and then you go out, have to go pick it up um, and, and put it back onto your backpack. Um, so even like the act of walking can be a bit of a video game in which you have to kind of like keep your balance um but it's one of those things that another thing that over time gets alleviated through some of the equipment you get like the exosuit like alleviates that almost completely um yeah i noticed with like i just got like when we're talking about i just got the uh the bottom part um, yeah yeah that's the exosuit the leg the 
walking so, back so, up the stairs. And I was like, oh, this feels completely different now. So we'll see yeah. what it brings over time. Yeah, it, I mean, it, you, you'll still lose balance if you're like, if you really get on rough terrain or you really take make a sharp turn with a ton of stuff on your back. But for the most part, you can just kind of like B line. You can go like A to B straight line without worrying about what's in your way. Um, you'll just kind of like walk over it. Um, and it, you also walk just generally faster with it when you have the exosuit. Um, so that's a big thing. And then, of course, vehicles. So you can load all sorts of stuff up into your vehicles and uh, and drive around, and you don't have to worry about, you know, balance with that at all. Um, yeah, that's one thing I still have to do. Like, I still have yet to try out one of the vehicles. Yeah, I, I would go... So the, you, early on, you're going to get a quest to go into a mule camp and get a server that you need to bring back to the main the central not city or whatever or the yeah lake, i did that lake i just city. haven't yeah i haven't continued on with uh actually making the generator to repair the bike that, i think it's the bike that's there that you're want to repair no no this is so this is chapter three. Oh, oh um, so there's another one in chapter three because i know early on in like chapter two yeah chapter two like yeah there's a so bike sitting that. near one of the locations and the bike was cool but um in chapter three you have to bring the server back to and it sends you into mule territory that's where i i killed every I, you don't kill them you just kind of knock them out knock them um, out yeah um that's where i knocked everybody out and kind of just went they, they had two trucks there two mule trucks and you can just load those things up and cart things back and forth and um, like I said, I spent like three hours like organizing it. There was just so much stuff. It was so ridiculous um, that there, there, you couldn't even fit it all. Into, you couldn't fit even nearly all of it into one truck. Um, and I ended up having to be like, okay, I need to make this pile of equipment, this pile of resources, and this pile of like lost deliveries or something like that because there was just so mm. much stuff. And then I had to think about like, okay, so what do I want to do first? Well, the pile of lost deliveries is small, so I can probably do that all in one load and that'll be like a checklist thing that I can take off. Um, and then I went onto the resources and started building all of this stuff. Then I went through all of the equipment because it was like, you know, had like three pairs of exo legs that I didn't need. Um, mm -hmm. And like a bunch of, you get like this, uh, they call it a bola gun. It's like a rope that wraps around people to, to knock them out. Um, I had like five of those <laughs> that I found in this camp. Um, so then I was like, okay, what do I do with this? Okay, I want some, I want to keep some of it, but I want to, you know, recycle some of it because I want materials. And stuff like that so it was all it was like a you know like a meta game here that i was trying to figure out um that i didn't even know was going to be a possibility until i went into this mule territory and kind of wiped everybody right. out and then had to go around collecting all this stuff um so i, I would do that i would check out you'll, you'll get to that quest eventually and um you know, you, you don't you don't have to necessarily take out the whole camp you can totally just swipe one of their trucks because there's two there, um, and then you'll have a truck, nice, which is pretty cool. All right, Lee, your turn. Oh, <laughs> so I, I we've talked about this, but I've had a different experience. See you guys. I yeah. did not enjoy this game. Um, I'm going to try and be as clear as I can with this because kind of I don't want to make fun of it or anything. I can see it's not a bad game. I can see it's not a, cra uh, a, a badly crafted game. I think of all of the games we've looked at, this is the one where it's going to be really individual as to how we react to specific themes within this game. Mm -hmm. um, now, so I'm starting off. Um, I understand. I already know that it's going to take a good 10 hours for this game to really start to kind of kick in and reveal itself. So I don't, it doesn't, it's, this, it's not 10 hours. It's, it's, it's eight, maybe. I don't know. It depends on how long you spend in chapter two. Cause once chapter three it's, kicked off for me, it was like, Oh, 
this is what the game is. And this it is, depends on how much time you spend like doing those side deliveries in in chapter two. Um, cool. If you stay with the main quest that they want you to do, um, mm. you can you can probably get through it with maybe three hours. I would mm. say, maybe that's about uh, as yeah. long as I spent in in that area. Yeah, it also kind of like depends too on like what happens because like. I had sure, that one that yeah. took me quite a time because I kept running in the time fall or Yeah, yeah. yeah if just... if you if you keep getting um if you keep getting caught by the BTs or something, like I can see it very being very difficult for somebody to get from the that location to the the final location, the port, because mm-hmm. there's a lot of BTs area BT areas, it's very rough terrain. Um and you could totally get fucked in that area, so that could that could be difficult. But if in terms of like what you have to do in order to get to there, if you want to just get there as quickly as possible, you could probably do it in like three hours. That's from the very start of that's calculating from the very start of the game, which the first hour is pretty much all story stuff. That didn't happen to me. <laughs> so. I get the I get the gist. I start the game and I get the gist of what I'm doing. I'm, I'm a delivery man. You stack up the back. You go off, and this is fight. So I'm out, and I'm tracking with my thing, and I'm starting to wobble a little bit all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like, okay, and then I start getting my tutorials, and kind of they kind of enigmatically float in and out on the side of the screen, like Kojima games normally do, which is fine when you can see what it is. Not so good when it's against a skybox and you can't see nothing. You're just aware that something's disappeared again. So I'm going along, and I'm, the first thing I do when I hit the grass is I fall over because I've slipped, because I've, I've juggled myself, because this kind of to and forth uh, wobbling thing goes on. Mm-hmm. And I damage my equipment. And me personally, as a gamer, I found that the thing I like the least in this game is damaging my... Because obviously it doesn't pay off very well when you actually deliver it. So yeah, I it's... hate having my stuff delivered. Uh, damaged. I hate it. So I yeah, realize the, the, that the, if you the, hold oh. the diminishing returns on that aren't too high. You gotta like pretty. You gotta damage your stuff quite a lot to get. Like you'll get like an A rank if you're at like seventy five percent or something like that. Um, yeah. There's some things but, that are that are more that are, it's more important that you protect it than others. But for yeah. the most part, as long as you're getting it there with fifty percent integrity, you're going to like complete mm. it you're not going to get a fail or anything like that yeah. but that bugged me so that bugged me so I find out that if I hold both trigger down at the same time you generally don't fall over unless you really yeah. kind of slip yeah you gotta really screw around if when you're holding the triggers to fall over to get everywhere I'm going so kind of I'm, I'm having this slow plod across this thing um, and then time fall kicks in and it starts to rot my stuff anyway and I'm starting. This is just starting to niggle me now. Um, uh, I don't know. It's, it's also things that start to annoy me that shouldn't annoy me within the game. Like I'm wearing a suit that's not affected by a time fall. So why don't I just cover the stuff that I don't want to rot in the stuff my suit's made of? And I start once I start questioning stuff like that. I'm probably not that invested in the game. Well, yeah, I mean, but nevertheless, so. I've gone through and I've tracked along and I've built my ladders and I've done this and that and the other. And there's a point where I got to where I lost it with this game. Because I was... It seems like the physics are a little bit dodgy sometimes. And I was on this ladder. I put the ladder across the river to take this high-value stuff and I really wanted this high-value stuff. Um, and I put the ladder down. I went across the ladder and for some reason something went wrong halfway through because it's supposed to be kind of a straight walkthrough, isn't it? And it locks you onto the ladder and you walk across. Yeah, it yeah, flipped me much. off on this river, and it stumbled me into the river and knocked all of my high value shit down the river. Hmm. And I started to chase it, and I kept falling out, and I started to get half of it. Yeah, and I mean, that's a that's the, a pain in the ass when your sweet. stuff starts going down. A river. Oh, yeah, yeah, and it just starts to bug me and starts to bug me more. And I collect half of it, and then it sweeps me up on feet again. And trying to get balance back is is a bad mechanic. I don't care what anybody says. Then you're, then so you're, I've done this. Then, you're, then your about... BB starts crying. Oh, <laughs> oh God! So yeah, I finally got the stuff. It's taken me ten to fifteen minutes to recollect all of my stuff. 
keep getting swept off my feet by this fairly heavy river. It's one at the bottom of the map where you, where your your original base is. Quite a heavy stream. So right, I've got this stuff, but it's half destroyed, and I'm starting to go forward, and it's telling me to go down this long path with BTs, and and I just got ruined, and then the rain started, and it destroyed my stuff, and the stuff started popping away on my back. And I just ran, and then I tripped on a rock and went further than I should have done, considering the physics, and I was just like, screw this game. It's just one of those things I think either it was things that happen within it rub you the wrong way or it, they don't. And it just balled me up into a thing. There's enough things in here that could kind of, if it gets you in the wrong mood, I don't think you would like very much. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just got to me. It was just like, it just felt like I was doing busy work and kind of, I would like to say they're like, they're enigmatic mechanics in there. Kind of, oh, do this. Uh, equip your willy so you, you know, equip your penis so you can wee and stuff like that. <laughs> And it's like all these quirky things that kind of, they're okay, but they're also fiddly busy work. And it, it just yeah. it just got, it rubbed me up the wrong way. And by the time I got to about hour 10, I was kind of done with it, I think. It's just one of those taste things, I think, and just the wrong combination of things going wrong, which is quite easy to do because it's quite a kind of a, mm-hmm. it's like a kind of a, Quite a free, free form game. Those things might yeah, never I mean, happen to anyone, but they I mean, could that's, all happen I mean, that's to someone. Like, that's what I was getting minutes. at when I was like, "Oh, the quests aren't there to be the big draw. It's more of like the misadventures you have along the way." I don't, didn't and I? And sometimes to... those misadventures can be a huge pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, uh, see, I, so I, I didn't, didn't get to it. I, I, I never yeah. had any. Some there's there were definitely a couple of times where the physics kind of fucked around mm. with me, but generally I've had mm. a pretty okay time for that. I mean, I I posted that video of that rope that was like the the rope stuff in this game is kind of weird sometimes. Mm. Like I was I grabbed onto this rope and I climbed up in a sh- absolute straight line straight up, even though the mm. connecting to the rope was like on a cliff like. 20 feet away so i was like climbing mm. up into midair um that's the only time mm. i ever had that pro that particular problem though um yeah mm. i never like had a problem with the ladders usually you're kind of stuck on it and you don't have to worry about it too mm. much so i don't i'm not mm. sure um what happened with that particular situation no, I think it just funked out but uh, yeah i think but it did take a long it does take a long time for this game to start to fire up and I always have a problem with that sort of pacing, that kind of that long, long intro. I wouldn't, if somebody told me that this series gets really good after 10 episodes, I'm probably not going to bother. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, you're going to have to sit through a lot of kind of boring stuff that you don't want to do. Once you get to the second season, it's brilliant. It's like, um, I'm all right, thanks. It's yeah. just one of those things. I wasn't willing to, I think, to kind of put that kind of long drag time in. The story doesn't really really reveal itself in that it takes quite a while to start letting you know what the hell's going on yeah and really some some of that Ooh. is tutorials but that that Ooh. beginning section while you could Ooh. consider it a like a really long tutorial the tutorialization kind of stops halfway through um mm-hmm. and it, it it does serve its purpose like teaching you all of the mechanics and stuff like that because it is kind of a it's a different game but um Mm -hmm. it did there is like there are definitely parts of it that drag um and Mm -hmm. i think that's one of the reasons why that that motorcycle is there so like Mm -hmm. once you go to that wind farm and then you come back you Mm -hmm. can then build generators and that can Mm -hmm. power up that motorcycle that's sitting outside of that that zone so you basically build the generator there that powers up the motorcycle and then you can use that to get because the next quest is to go all the way back to the starting zone the starting area Mm. and you can take that to Mm. go back to the starting area and it's like a million times faster (laughs) because it's a motorcycle um Mm. and you know it's and it's also a different kind of game because 
uh, you have to, the physics of the motorcycle are different than the physics of the person, so there's routes you can and can't take with the motorcycle that you could and couldn't take when you're on foot. So, um, mm. and the same thing with the, um, with the truck, when you get it in, in chapter three, there's like, you can't take that everywhere. You can go on foot, but it can be a little bit more, um, versatile on, you know, certain types of terrain. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely, it, there's no way that I can like give this a absolute recommendation across the board because it's a definitely a hit or miss game whether or not it's going to click um and like it just happened to fall into the same like the same feeling that i got with breath of the wild um where you can in this game you can build all of these ladders and ropes and stuff like that and kind of kind of go wherever you want in the same sense that you can do that in Breath of the Wild. So the open world stopped stops being about getting from checkpoint to checkpoint or settlement to settlement and more about like I just want to explore and I'm not bound by the normal conventions of video game exploring where we're going to put a cliff here because we don't want you to go there. It's more like mm. we're going to put a cliff here and if you want to, you can figure out how to get over it. Um, if you don't, that's okay. You can go around it and you'll have a different adventure. But if you went over the cliff, you'd have something else, some some other type of um, experience. Um, and that's, that's, what, that's what gets me. That's what kind of like makes me excited because like the, the Far Cry Assassin's Creed super heavily crafted open world experience is just kind of um you know it, it's wearing thin for me anyway um mm. i do i do like it like it every once in a while is like a turn my brain off and just go through and do a big checklist but um i do like where um but like there's there's no way that kojima didn't play breath of the wild and think i want to make my own one of these and that Mm. this is the game that he made um in the same way that he played um you know dark souls and said i wanted to make one of these games and he added in that asynchronous type of multiplayer in minecraft and um and stuff like that so yeah it's like one of the first games post breath of the wild that i felt like okay, we're starting to see what Breath of the Wild did for open world games trickle into other games. Um, In the same way that, like, the most recent Assassin's Creed games have a lot in common with The Witcher 3 um, and the way that those games, that game was designed. You know, this game has some elements of the open world and exploration of of Breath of the Wild, so... um, I'm hoping that uh, we start to see more of that in the future. And the story is just so fucking bizarre uh, and delivered so weird and it's so uneven. Um, Like, I love the setting. I think the setting is so cool. Like, the, the history and, like, how the lore and the, and everything and the way the world looks like it looks like creepy but also like green and colorful in certain areas it's like it's got this really strange look to it um that i really like but the story that they're telling in this game is terrible um and i think it feels a little bit like kind of because before he's always winked at other stuff you know, other genres, other tropes. Yeah. This feels like the first time he's winking at himself, so it's like a double wink. <laughs> yeah. It feels like a lot of he's him just, doing his own thing. He's closing his eyes. <laughs> it's a little bit like the work bird that flies in smaller and smaller in circles and flies up his own arse, sort of thing. Yeah. And kind of characters are reminiscent of things he's done before, but tweaked and stretched and 
very strange, very strange story. Yeah, and I think with a few exceptions, the um, the acting in it is terrible. Like, I mean, Norman Reedus is just bad. Um, mm. He's like, it's it's this this. I can't tell whether or not it's just he's bad or they had him for like a day to record all of his lines and oh, he um, works it for months apparently well I, yeah i don't know of, of, well, no no he's i mean just like that in general yeah I, I don't i don't think they had norman Reedus available for months or years that's not that's not yeah. how that goes like you you get your actors in for like a certain amount of time and then um mm. Hopefully, when you have people like Troy Baker, who's a professional mm. video game voice actor, um, and that's what he does for a living, he can come back in and do mm. rereads and tweak things and stuff like that. But you have Norman mm. Reedus, who's uh, you know a Hollywood actor. You probably don't have. He's he's not going to commit that much time to it. You know, he's just not going to be able mm. to because it's not going to be worth his his time. Um, so like. It, it it has the symptoms of not only does it, do I not think Norman Reedus has the acting ability to um, pull off any type of emotion, um, <laughs> but Definitely I don't project it through motion capture. No. Yeah, uh, I don't yeah. think they he he was there enough to like do a retake of a line like Ooh. because it it was it's the same symptom that. Um, you know, Kiefer Sutherland had in Metal Gear Solid Five, right? Um, mm. y- you just didn't have him there as much as you had somebody like David Hayter to fill in, yeah. like to be there and deliver these lines over and over again and add more to it later on. You were just going to get him in because it would have been so expensive and it would have been so much of a time sink for for them to get into. Um, mm. I think I think from what little I've seen of Bads Mickelson, he does a pretty good job. Um, but he suffers both from what you've just been saying. It feels like that? they've had him for as long as they've had him, and then they've kind of just spread him throughout the game. Yeah, yeah, it's that. Yeah. But he's doing a much better job with what little time they had of him. Like he's mm. his 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 acting in that game is he's like if he's acting circles around Norman Reedus basically. Oh, yeah. if, even though really you're only seeing him in these kind of like flashback sequences right now or something like that. Um, yeah. He's, he's doing a much, they did a much better job with what limited time they had with him than they did with Norman yeah. Reedus. Um, or, or indeed all the directors that are in the movie. Yeah. Like his like, director friends. Yeah. Like for some reason, Guillermo del Toro's character body is in it, but his, mm. That's definitely not his voice. Um, no. so I, I, I was surprised they have Hartman. as much of the actor of um, that does Fragile. I, I don't forget. I forget her name, but she's in it a lot more than I thought she would be, and she's doing okay. Like I think she's the thing that, a pretty good character so far. The thing that confused me with that thing is because Guillermo del Toro sounds like Guillermo del Toro. So I thought they was doing that thing, but then you get other directors pop in, um, and like Nicholas Winding Refn is not Dutch anymore. He's just a, like a British guy. It's like, well, why did you even use his face if he wasn't going to use his other well-known likeness? It didn't make sense that they just use his face for something. Yeah. Other than he was his friend, and it's it's really weird. It's really weird, weird disconnect, especially if you know who these people are. Yeah, you know who Edgar Wright is. It's like Edgar Wright is not American. He's a nasal British person. Mm-hmm. Um, why have you put him in there if you're not? If well, you're even using the face, what was the yeah. point? I mean, maybe it was a fact of like they didn't want to do the voice acting. I don't know. Like, mm. like their 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 directors. Maybe they didn't want to do the voice acting. Yeah, maybe they're not yeah. trained voice actors, so. But it's just weird know. that one was and the other wasn't. It sound like them and the other didn't. It's weird. Threw me off a bit. Yeah, it's it's definitely that yeah. that aspect of it is definitely strange, and it's and it's disappointing for me for two fronts because I love the story 
the the even though I I know it's completely crazy and ridiculous Metal Gear story, um, it was fun because it was so crazy and ridiculous, and yeah. just seeing him go off the rails in so many different ways um, was entertaining. So you don't get that yeah. here. Um, you get kind right. of like like you said glimpses of it, but it's just not as fully. Um, it doesn't it doesn't seem like the like you said the wink that that he does in the metal gear story and then on top mm-hmm. of that you have this really cool original setting that they're just not taking advantage of at all in the story in my opinion mm. um i think the gameplay does a better job with the setting than the story does with the setting yeah, mm-hmm. yeah i'll go with that yeah. but i think we got through it i think we managed to kind of do what we could with it. I mean, we didn't really talk about the bridge babies and what 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 does BT stand for? None of it's really. Um, oh God, Derek, I remember. Lee, you give up? Yeah, it's a uh, beached things. Beached things. Yeah, there's like some beach meta beaching metaphor. But basically, yeah. the first. Yeah. Th- the first hour of this game is the like four trailers that have been put out for the game stitched together mm-hmm. with a yep. little bit of gameplay yeah. in between. <laughs> um so walk which over was, here, cutscene time. Yeah, walk which was way. which was cutscene. kind of baffling to me when I when I first know when I first realized it. Um But then like it started to make sense because like I don't think that you know there was the quote-unquote Blake check with this game that a lot of people were suggesting it was getting I think it had a pretty decent budget but I think it had to yeah. work within limitations and mm. one of those limitations is not being able to pay the actors to come back and do more takes another thing yeah. is having to get the most out of all of this uh, motion capture that you've been doing so yeah you put the trailer you use the trailers also in the game to um to you know set up the story and stuff like that um Mm -hmm. so and also like the fact that this game came out like in a reasonable amount of time after it was announced is also kind of a suggestion that um you know they kind of wanted to get the game out even though they weren't they they it could have used maybe another they could they could have spent another year on this game but it would have cost more money just to keep mm-hmm. the studio in production on it um which is maybe money they didn't they didn't necessarily have but yeah so i, I guess we'll the the reception has been mostly positive but not mm-hmm. like overwhelmingly so but I think it's still going to do pretty well. I think we'll probably see some sort of follow-up, whether it be Death Stranding 2 or um, some other project that um, he wants, Kojima wants to move on to. Um, whatever. Do you think he's got many more games left in him? And I heard him say recently he wants to try and actually make a movie off of his own back. Do you actually think he's got many games left? I think he's probably only got a couple. What is he now, 60? I don't think he's that old. He's maybe in his fifties. Um, yeah, I think so. I think, I mean, he he already before Death Stranding even came out, he was saying that he wanted it to be multiple. Um, he's fifty six. Um, yeah. So he's almost sixty. Um, he, he you know he wanted it to be a multiple game. He wanted it to be multiple games. So um, mm. I think we'll probably see at least another game in this realm um and yeah he's he wants to make movies too so mm-hmm. i don't i don't think those will be very good but you know no no can you imagine <laughs> him taking this to hollywood and yeah. like, what is this nonsensical shit um, <laughs> yeah i don't know I, yeah on the other hand i would like to see him helm a metal gear solid movie like to see what he does with that i don't know mm. like uh whether it be 
everything condensed into a shorter like one movie or a couple of movies or something like that i don't know i think i'd like to see what that would be um but i i don't know i hope hopefully it isn't that doesn't go down the same road that you know the storytelling and best stranding went down because it's it's Mm -hmm. it's definitely in my opinion the weakest part which is what i thought was going to be the most interesting part of this game so yeah Mm-hmm. Shows shows what I know. Um, <laughs> all right, Death Stranding. It's a game. It's oh. out. You can play it. Yes. You can play it again next year on PC. Um, thank you for joining us in this very special episode of Voxel Viewpoint. If you'd like to hear or see more, please consider subscribing to us on your favorite podcast app, subscribing to us on YouTube, or visiting voxelvoice.com where all of our great content comes together in one place. Also check out the Voxel Voice Facebook group, where you can join in on the discussion with a great, like-minded community. 